Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com, and these are your September 2024 horoscopes. And September, we have the start of eclipse season. And for the first time in 18 years, we are going to have an eclipse in Pisces with the North Node. Nine years ago, we had eclipses in Pisces again, but with the South Node. Now it's with the North Node. They carry different energy. So the first eclipse in a new sign, we're going to have a new direction in life, a new karmic direction personally and collectively. New trends will be emerging. The other big event this September is that from the beginning of September, Pluto is re-entering for the last time in your lifetime ever. Capricorn. Oh, and by the way, this year I task astrologer Christina with making uh, the 2025 uh, written horoscopes for each of the 12 signs, 120 pages for each of the signs. What is happening every day with every transit, with every ingress, every eclipse, every new moon, full moon, specifically for your sun, moon or ascendant it's incredible those written and video horoscopes are out if you want to buy them i'm putting a link below uh, i'm very proud of this work i'm very proud with the work that christina did so let's continue with september and we're gonna pass through all the 12 signs but let's first talk a little bit how these two events can affect us collectively and for the world events and personally as well and then we'll go for the 12 signs maybe for more specific manifestations. So Pluto is going back to Capricorn. It, oops, oh, you can't see this, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to use it then. Uh, for the last time in our lives, the next time it will be in Capricorn again, it will be in 240 years or something like that. And it's going to be in Capricorn the whole September, the whole October until the 18th, 19th of November. So two and a half months. So Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, exactly around the time when we had the big financial crash, when Pluto changes signs, usually at the very beginning when it first enters a sign, and the very last time it enters a sign, we see major events. And 2008, with this financial crisis crash, we started witnessing the dismantling, because Pluto dismantles things, destroy them, of faith in people and institutions. Capricorn is institutions, governments, uh, big corporations, any hierarchical structures that were pillars of society for hundreds of years for us that we trusted blindly and, you know, without questioning. And this has been dismantling slowly since 2008. How many people trust their governments? How many people trust the banks and corporations anymore? And all the dirty stuff, which is Plutoic, puts to the surface all the dirty business, all the dirty uh, underwear, as they say, uh, to the surface so people can see it. But at the same time, Pluto is the planet of control. So what has happened since then? Governments, corporations, big institutions, they have been putting more regulations, tightening the control. We saw during this period from 2008 till now, COVID happened, we saw so many new rules, regulations, which is very Capricornian in energy, much more control. And Pluto likes to consolidate the power in one place. Pluto likes to do a power grab, just like a few corporations, big ones like Amazons, like the big ones that there was a, a transfer of $3 billion, uh, $3 trillion, Three trillion dollars from the middle class, normal businesses, mom and pop shops into the hands of big corporations again during Pluto in Capricorn era that we've been through. So Pluto is this tiny planet, but it wants to consolidate power, power grab. And they have been doing it, those corporations, big businesses. But at the same time, Pluto ex uh, exposes this dirt and people collectively, because Plut Pluto also rules the evolutionary level of consciousness of humanity as well. So people have been understanding those things. At the same time, those corporations and anything Capricornian root have been tightening their control. So what can we expect Pluto going back there into Capricorn for the last time, a last push, uh, kind of very intense, trying to grab power in some way, trying to take power 
from the lower levels of the pyramids, concentrating it to, to, into the higher levels of the pyramids. So maybe in the news for the next two and a half months, there'll be a lot of this issues that we're talking about. And it started with the financial crisis. I don't know. I'm not making anything scary. I'm not trying to say that there'll be a big crash again, but it might be the <laughs> Pluto last ingress into Capricorn might start this. And because Pluto can destroy as well, it can start destroying some of those banks and financial institutions and structures, the old structures. Last time for Pluto, first of all, for them to try and grab more power, at the same time, dismantling them. <laughs> so let's see how this plays out. It will be interesting in a personal level. Uh, and you'll see a lot of some very important things with governments. We have the elections in America during that time. Um, this power struggles with governments, with structures, Capricorn is all structures of political power and control, big clashes as well between such uh, roles. Uh, be between in, in such areas. But watch out the bankings, watch out the big corporations, the big governments, what they're doing, uh, because it will escalate and possibly for, for the last time, not possibly, for the last time. <laughs> um, and on the personal level, Pluto going back into Capricorn will be kind of a last chance to take personal responsibility in some area of our life to really... Uh, centralize in you know, some sort the power to, uh, in certain area that it's more consolidated. So this can be very good on a personal level. We'll look where exactly in your life it can be as well. And Pluto will stay for those two months at the 29th critical degree at the very end of Capricorn. 29th degree is a karmic degree of endings of completions. Um, so you might complete something. Is there something you've been struggling since many years, maybe 14, 15, or longer or shorter? Well, Pluto was in Capricorn that some repeat, and the lessons of Capricorn are very slow. Maybe you've tried something over and over and over, and it's maybe it's giving results, but slower than you want, or maybe you're struggling with some problem. You've been struggling with some issue that keeps cropping up. And now Pluto coming back into Aquarius for the last time, it has the possibility to finally resolve this karmic situation that has been troubling you, that has been repeated and very slowly giving results. After that, Pluto will move into Aquarius again for the next 18 years. And all issues that we encounter will be much faster. The energy of Aquarius is bam, bam, bam. The problems get solved faster. Aquarius is this very fast quick energy, fast changes, turns around, oh, oh, oh. While Capricorn, where Pluto is like, you're digging slowly, slowly. And you think you're there, but you're not fully there. So now you have a last chance to the culmination of something you've been doing for a long time, to see the results of it, to keep, reap the rewards or the results of it for better or worse. 29 degrees are karmic, as I said. You see the results of your previous actions and something ends. Something ends in a powerful way in your life, but it's something you've been doing for a long time in a positive way or struggling in a long time for a long way. And the resolution has been slow, but the next two and a half months, it's coming. Um, there is this kind of peak of realization of something and resolution of some issue in your life. Um, and... Of course, we have the full moon, the, the full moon eclipse on the 18th of September. That's the other big event in September. I can't show it to you, but the full moon is here. Imagine this is the moon that is being eclipsed by the North Node Rahu, and it's hemmed in between Saturn and Neptune. Ooh, Saturn and Neptune in a very karmic sign in Pisces. As I said, it's the first time in 19 years we're going to have an eclipse. Or 18 years in Pisces again with the North Node. Uh, and the eclipses are happening till now in Aries, Libra, but this is the first one in Pisces, so a new theme is coming. And what are eclipses? It is uh, like changing the rails. And it's 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 like fated events that realign you with uh, the direction, the course in your life. On a personal level, usually... If it affects you, if you have anything around 25 degrees Pisces, Virgo, 
or any planet there, I would say even from 20 to 30 degrees Pisces or Virgo, you would feel it the strongest, whether it's your ascendant, sun or moon or some other planet. That can be a huge uh, new direction and events around eclipses, they're quick, they're fast, they throw us into, they make a big change in our life. Usually these are fated events, these are karmic events, these are events that are part of, they were programmed in us, so to speak. That's why many times people like uh, births, deaths, pregnancies, marriages, meeting someone, divorcing from someone, any of those really big events, starting a new career, something that really redefines the direction in your path, redefines the uh, tracks that your train is running on, changes the derails and changes it in a different direction. So very big uh, changes happening here that we're going to see. Uh, and collectively and personally, uh, collectively, Pisces is connected to water. And we can watch now in September big events connected either to flooding, Saturn is connected to dams or to water as well, Saturn in Pisces. Uh, Neptune is connected to water as well. So water, floods, hurricanes, Neptune and Pisces rule the big natural events. Let's say like um, big uh, natural events. Sometimes can be disasters, but when the nature shows its might, this is Pisces. This is Neptune as well, and it's part of the eclipse. And if you look at the background, the constellations behind is still the Pisces, the fishes, and the eclipse is happening right between uh, the one of the fishes and right next to the waters of the water bearer. This is the constellation. So there is a lot of water connotations there. So watch what is happening in the water. What, what is happening with the water, with their uh, natural phenomena pertaining to water as well. And the drinking water as well. There might be something that is there to watch out for. And floods and rains and such kind of stuff can also be another topic. Um, also Pisces, where the eclipse is happening, rules anything that is foreign, anything that is unknown to us and they can be very strong escalation like xenophobia because saturn the planet of resentment is there um square jupiter jupiter is in pisces is in gemini gemini is local people and this full moon eclipse activates the square between jupiter and saturn which as i was speaking before jupiter is in gemini local people while Saturn is in Pisces, which is the unknown, the refugees, the illegals, or whatever you, you know, people that are not from your culture, people that are not familiar from you. There has been a clash when Saturn and Jupiter happened in August, the square. That's when the big clashes happened in France, in England. Sorry, in England, I think there were. And there was this big escalation, uh, the government punishing people for writing against uh, immigration and so on, exactly like we were speaking before that, at the beginning of July and the beginning of August already, that this is going to happen. This eclipse as escalates again, the square between Saturn and Jupiter, locals and foreigners, uh, Pisces is illegal immigrants or immigrants, aliens and so on. So there can be activation of this topic, this escalation of tension as well. So watch out for anything Pisces related. Pisces is also the health system, has hospitals, invisible threats like viruses. And I shared on my social media that those two eclipses in Pisces, first one in September where the moon is between Saturn and Neptune. Um, so it's activating the Saturn-Neptune conjunction in the sign of Pisces, which is known Saturn and Neptune are known as a combination to trigger uh, health problems and uh, pandemics. 2019 or 1917, when Saturn and Neptune were again together, I don't think they were in Pisces together, but they were again conjunct. That was the Spanish flu period when they did like a big vaccination and a lot of, you know, it spread all over the world. Now they're coming together. They're, they're actually getting closest together next July 2025 and then in 2026. But this eclipse now is triggering them already. And then again in March, 
in March of 2025, they'll be much closer together, Saturn and Neptune, and there'll be a new another eclipse in Pisces, but solar eclipse, that's the one that I, I'm most worried for when it comes to illness and pandemics and such kind of, you know, Pisces, anything invisible that can be attacking us in some way. But uh, it's it's already activated in September, so I'm putting it out there, not to scare you, but just looking back what happened in previous times when Saturn and Neptune are together. And in Pisces in particular, on the axis of Pisces Virgo, which is connected to disease and such matters. And this eclipse is being in Pisces also can activate matters connected to karma. This is the last sign, paying off karma, seeing the results. It's a full moon eclipse to see the results of something. And the karma can be really good. If you've been doing good actions, till then you can be reaping something really good on a personal level. Or it can be collectively, for humanity, they can be something that is an escalation of the intense collective feelings and moods collectively. Uh, because it's Pisces after all, these are the feelings. So that's why natural phenomena can be happening as well as an escalation of the feelings of humans in some way. Um, the astro, the gathering of the astro, because Pisces rules the astro, the feelings, emotions, the anger, uh, and the collective energy, it's kind of unloading now with this full moon eclipse. That's why I'm talking about more events that are very powerful, natural, or nature-related in some way. Uh, but also Pisces on a high vibration is the consciousness of humanity and the ability to shift the consciousness in a powerful way, to shift to the next level. Consciousness jumps are powerful. So I see over the next year and a half, two, I will have Pisces eclipses, huge spiritual awakening, huge spiritual awakening for you. It, on a personal level, it might be really powerful awakening, intuitive resolution, seeing a problem from a much higher perspective in a certain area of your life where Pisces falls in. It's almost like you intuitively download your understanding in a higher perspective and you're above that thing. You, you raise your vibrationness level in that area of your life. So this is uh, collectively. Now we can look quickly for each of the 12 signs. Uh, for Aries, for example, Saturn, not Saturn, but Pluto is coming back into your 10th house Aries. And for the last time in your life, Aries, Sun, Moon, are rising. I always check first the Ascendant sign. Then you can check your Sun and Moon for extra details. So you might be completing over the next two, three months something connected to career. Or you might come back to some unfinished project in regards to your career uh, that you are trying to put life back to it because Pluto is also to revive something that you've abandoned, that you... And you're trying to complete it, to see it, to a resolution, to an ending. Um, or there can be like some big change that you're doing over the next two and a half months with your career. Maybe you're abandoning one aspect of your career or one role with your career that you identify with and changing for something. Maybe by, I would say by November, you might see how things are really changing there. Uh, or maybe you've been grappling with some issue in regards to your career or your public role or with some institutions or father figure or with some authority figure that you've been struggling with or with your own career and your own authority and your own personal responsibility in life that you couldn't, you've been struggling with or you've been dealing with and now you can have a conclusion. Now you can have a culmination and a resolution of such a matter finally. Now, the eclipse on the 18th of September is happening in your 12th house, Pisces. Sorry, Aries, in Pisces. This eclipse can affect you some very strongly because many Aries people might have planets in Pisces. Pay attention, especially if this planet is around the 25th degree. This can be life-altering. But otherwise, the 12th house is about letting go of something. Or um, So this powerful eclipse can be... A, time to release especially 12 houses connected to self-sabotaging behaviors like addictions like uh, they might not be physical ones they might be psychological your personal fears that are blocking you from growing so this can be like a big breakthrough that the eclipse does for you with some internal fears uh, addictions self-sabotaging behaviors that are blocking you 
maybe a psychologist can help you, or maybe it can be spontaneous and internal resolution and spontaneous and internal seeing the seeing the situation from a higher perspective, seeing a certain problem that you've been grappling with, a certain loss as well it might be from a higher perspective that frees you. After all, the 12th house is a house of liberation, moksha, spiritual liberation that allows you to get your consciousness to a higher level. So it can be even a portal for some of you for mystical experiences, for seeing a situation from a higher vibrational perspective and shifting it there. It's an internal revolution for you. It's an internal spiritual shift of higher consciousness. But for some of you, it can be an activation of something connected to foreign countries, to faraway places, some important development if you've been doing something connected to some faraway places, foreign countries. They can be powerful activations now. Uh, of course, 12 house is the house of losses. So yes, we have to be careful if you're in areas for something connected to losses. Um, just keep it in mind. Also, secrets and hidden enemies can come to the surface. You can, you can, they can be shining of understanding of something that's been happening behind your back that you are not aware of, and that is brought to your attention now. And that is impactful. It's kind of important for you to know this now that as, as it's an important for your spiritual development. It's important for your life overall. So yeah, secret, something hidden coming to the surface. But the 12th house is also a very inspirational house of downloading information of your dream world, of connection to the invisible worlds where areas you can have messages or connect with your past lives or connect with something from your subconscious that was buried deeply to heal it, to realize it, to bring it to the surface, to become aware of it in some way. All right. Or it might be connected as well to faraway traveling, to faraway places, but I would advise you not to do it exactly around the eclipse time because this eclipse is with Saturn. So this is might not be the most pleasant experience, let's say. If you're a Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Rising, Pluto, is entering for the last time in your life for two and a half months, your ninth house. If you have some unresolved issues connected to legal matters, to higher education, and to the court systems as well, this might be the final. It's like the resolution to it for the next two and a half months, though. It might come back to you, but it's, it's a, for a final time to be resolved. It might mean also coming back to some education or higher knowledge to complete it, to resolve it. Or if you've been working very hard on something connected to Night House, teaching, traveling, something relocation to a foreign country, le legal papers for foreign residents, or even connected to import exports, business with foreigners in some way, interactions with foreigners, you can see the results of it. You can finally, it's the final time Pluto is there. You can finally see the results of it or the last results of it. But also it can mean that you, uh, if you've been having problems with such matters, this is the final time you'll have problems that will be resolved. Whether it's educational, whether it's uh, for higher knowledge, for foreign countries' travels and so on, it can be resolved. Or problems with father figures and teacher figures and mentor figures, which is the ninth, the ninth house. Again, this can be resolved for the last time, finally, and you're left alone after that in that area of life. Um, also, it can be this big time, last chance to take a big responsibility of your worldview, to reshape it, to transform it, your belief systems, and to burst the bubble of illusions in regards to your belief systems. To really, re And you've been doing this for a long time, your belief system. Oh, your ninth house is also your higher mind, so this is powerful chance for the next two and a half months to have like a spiritual breakthrough, to have like a psychological breakthrough to, to a higher perspective, which is the ninth house, to see a problem from a higher, bigger, different perspective in some way. Uh, okay, and then the eclipse for you, Tauruses, which is happening in Pisces, this would be more, more your 11th house, this is the first eclipse in many years, since many years happening in your 11th house. And it is with Saturn, it is with Neptune. Something big can be happening in regards to your friendships. 
And yeah, there can be some crisis there or shake up or you deciding to release because it's spices to release, to let go. And to put boundaries, Saturn, uh, to friendships or participation in groups or communities that are no longer necessary or that are maybe more unhealthy rather than healthy for you, more unhelpful than positive for you. There can be some big change happening in the life of friends around your older siblings. 11th house is also your goals and dreams, your long-term goals and dreams, your desires. And this can be a big activation to do something there. And it is a full moon eclipse. So maybe some goal, long-term goal or dream that you've been working on and that you can really start activating for the next two, three months uh, during the, after the eclipse that, and that there is the need for hard work there, Saturn, but also you'll be seeing uh, results. You'll be seeing developments there in some important ways. 11th house is also your income or some kind of income that comes from extra, extra side business, for example. So this might activate for you hard work with Saturn there and inspiration with Neptune in that direction as well, seeing the results maybe to receive some bonus, maybe to for, if you've been working hard till then in some area of life, in some long-term goals, in some big project of yours, you might start seeing the results now. And the, the rewards from it, because the 11th house rules gains and earnings and rewards of some sort. So this eclipse can activate for your rewards as well. Gemini Sun Moon Arising. Pluto is coming back for the last time in your life in your eighth house. For the next two and a half months, almost to the end of November, you might have like a last revisit with some unresolved psychological issue or eight house rules, anything that has more power over us than we have over it. It might be an obsession. It might be a compulsion. Uh, it might be some kind of a trauma as well that you haven't overcome. And Pluto is there for the last time, maybe eight house, the house of death and loss. And if you've lost someone or something uh, that you may be still mourning in some way, it might be last time revisit for you, but also healing, total release from that and healing and coming out of this dark tunnel by the end of November after that, totally healed and renewed and free from compulsion, obsession, or something that has more control, power over you. Uh, also, if you've been struggling with some, some power struggle, for example, the eighth house can be that. Uh, some It might be some power struggle with a partner or business partner or about values or um, about money or some battle because eighth house is the house of the battleground. It's a battle has been going for years in your life in certain area. Um, this is the last time it's coming around and to be resolved. It's the last degree of Capricorn to be resolved, to be freed from it, to be even sometimes eight houses connected to court cases and such matters. Uh, when two people are battling it out, you know, whether for money or something else, it might be the final, the resolve, the ending of it. Uh, also, if there were some situations that take advantage of you that feels like your power was taken away, that there was an abuse of power in some way. This is coming back for the last time so you can take your power back. So this time you are not the victim anymore, but you feel empowered and you feel like the one who has the cards in their hands now, who has the upper hand, as they say. So it can be some powerful psychological healing for some of you. Also, if Eight houses also matters, uh, you know, if you've been battling it out for some alimony or money from government, unearned money, this is money that comes to you from to you from others, or that is owed to you from others. It might be the final chapter of it, ending after that. Um, eight house is also the house of banks and investments and hidden money as well. <laughs> so there might be something there that you're completing, and you're seeing the results of. Um, 
And of course, it's one of the houses of intimacy. There will be some issues and power struggles in your intimate life as well, or problems there. It can be the last time where these issues get resolved in some way. But basically, the, the eighth house is one of the hardest houses, which rules, I mentioned so many things, but crisis, if your life since 2008 has had a lot of ups and downs as a Gemini, this is the last time Pluto, and Pluto has been building in you strong emotional resilience, basically. It's a long time period in the eighth house. It's lessons. It's very hard in the eighth house. It can take you from ups and downs, big, big shifts in life, transformations, emotional uh, crisis of sorts, uh, and reversals in life. But this is the final of it, and you're coming out of it much more emotionally, let's say, empowered, emotionally resilient. And yeah, so this is the last point of it. For example, some of you might receive some money they've been, you know, trying to get. Some of you might receive in the spirit release from obsessions, from compulsions, from a, a situation of trauma, from uh, experience of trauma from the past as well, from some power gain that is happening in your life. You can get the resolve of it, being freed from it finally. Okay. Uh, then for you, Gemini, there is the eclipse as well. The eclipse. So if you're here, the eclipse is happening in your 10th house, especially Gemini from 20 to 30 degrees might feel it very strongly because the eclipse is at 25 degrees, but there is a big focus on your career and what you can contribute to the world. So for some of you, it can be a shift. As I said, I was describing it. Eclipses is like shifting of the rails that your train is driving on, is riding on. And it might be in your career. So over the next three months, for some of you, might have a big shift from one career direction to another or might be completing some project in regards to career that you've been working on sometimes, seeing the results of it because Lunar eclipse is about seeing the results of it. There can be a big change in relationships with authority figures, maybe a boss going, a new one coming or something, or with your father figure. If there is a father in your life, there might be something big happening and changing in their life. And also with your own authority, which is the 10th house, that you're realizing something on a deep level and you're deciding either to commit more deeply or to take on some project or to finish some project connected to your career, connected to your personal responsibilities and actions. Now, if you're Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Pluto is coming for the last time ever in your life, in your seventh house for the next two and a half months. And Pluto has been in your seventh house for what, uh, 14, 15, 16 years now, since 2008. And maybe a lot of you went through a lot of ups and downs in their personal relationships. Uh, maybe someone appeared over the last 13 to 14 years in your life that really transformed your life, but also might have made it hell because <laughs> Pluto can be both, you know? Pluto challenges challenges us to the biggest evolutionary growth, but usually it's not easy. It might be through crisis. Oh, my husband is cancer as well. So I appeared in his life during that time. So they can be last uh, vestiges of this kind of a, especially if you're not in the right relationship or if you're in a relationship that has outgrown its power and it's more toxic now than transformational for you, this can be the last breaths of such a relationship or this can be the last reckoning there. Or if you've been having some problems or your partner has been going through difficult issues for years, possibly, or in your relationships with others, business or personal partners, there's been more power struggles or more crisis this is the last of it and there is a completion and resolution and even healing with this last visit of pluto in your seventh house or if there's been an equal power in some relationship it might be a relationship with a friend or with a loved one basically what we call power struggles again this can escalate a little bit but only to be finally resolved and to leave your life and to never come back again. So there might be really like a powerful exodus of toxic poisonous behaviors from others towards you or um, this, or you towards others, unhealthy, obsessive in any way, or an equal 
you might see a resolution of that. First, maybe some escalation, but also resolution and being freed from that afterwards. Um, also, if you've been working hard on some partnership or on some business deal, which is the seventh house, this can be you seeing the results of it, the peak, the culmination for positive, negative, in a positive or negative way, uh, depending on your actions. Also, cancers, there is the eclipse in your ninth house. First eclipse in Pisces, and there will be a few for the next few years. So first eclipse in Pisces in your ninth house, powerful change of your consciousness. Ninth house is your belief system, ninth house rules how you perceive reality, what you believe. There might be like a bursting of your bubble in some certain when it comes to how you saw reality and what you saw, maybe you can change your political views or your spiritual views in some way. This is a process that will carry on probably for a couple of years, but it starts with this eclipse that something makes you start shifting your beliefs and how you see reality. Also, there might be some big change in the life of a father figure of yours, because nine house rules, father figures, or mentor figure, or a teacher. Sometimes eclipses can cause a crisis there, but that will shift you in a different direction or through a different perspective, or in a different relationship with those mentor figures, teacher figures, or a father, real father figure. Nine house is also anything to do with higher education. You might be completing, because it's a full moon, seeing the results, maybe completing some education or higher knowledge, or you might even have some breakthrough psychologically and on spiritual level to access higher realities, because the ninth house is the house of higher realities, higher realizations about your purpose in life, your meaning, seeing a situation from a different way, higher perspective than normal, which frees you which frees you from a situation of stagnation in some way. Also, there can be activation with the solar lunar eclipse in matters regarding foreign travel, foreign relocation, or matters regarding education of, uh, education of some sort, teaching, learning, something big happening there, of some importance in your life as well. And of course, there can be activation of meeting a guru or a teacher that changes your life. And this is more person who has dharmic quality in your life in a way to redirect you towards your dharma, which is uh, your purpose in life. All right. But there might be some kind of a, a bit initially existential crisis of faith, crisis of faith, because your faith is changing, your belief system is changing. Uh, you might challenge your belief system. Something might challenge internal, external, how you see reality, what you believed in. And there can be a big shift in your loyalties because our belief systems determine our loyalties. Okay. If you're Leo Sun Moon Arising, this Pluto is entering for the last time your sixth house. Maybe asking you to revisit for the last time for the next two and a half months some health issues to fix with personal responsibilities, Capricorn, uh, and to be more responsible in some regards of your health, to do some more concerted focus, willpower effort, which is Pluto in regards to your health, to change it. And actually, because Pluto is at that critical 29 degree, it can help you and it's leaving, it's never coming back again. It can help you resolve some long-lasting health issue and health situation. But that can mean that some health issue that might come back to you. And only to dig deep, to realize, to transform it, to change it, to release it. Because Pluto is basically at the very last critical degree. And it's going to free you after that from the sixth house matters after November onwards if you've been struggling with such for some time now. Um, also, the sixth house is the house of debt. It might connect to you solving the final resolution of some debt. It might be a debt towards another person, like having to take care of another, to be in service to another, or a debt of financial nature as well that you might resolve in some way uh, over the next two and a half months. The sixth house is also the house of animosity. We call it in ancient astrology the house of enemies. So if you have some, you know, 
power struggle with another. This can be the last time it's and it's been going on for some time because Pluto has been in your sixth house almost since 2008. This can be resolved. It can be also the last time that you revisit some project or work that you've been doing for some time and you're completing it and putting final touches to it. And it pulls out there, might require you to concentrate your efforts to work hard on certain project and some career. And Pluto also wants to eliminate what is not necessary when it comes to your service, to your work, to make you more efficient there as well. So you might put extra efforts when it comes to work, extra dedication and concentration. So you can complete it probably the latest by November, December. And you know, you can give whatever you've been working on to the world as a service. So it might even ask you to release and let go of some old career or direction of career that you've been going on um, and you'll be freed from that kind of service. All right. Now, there is also an eclipse happening here in your eighth house. Actually, two difficult houses activated with the two important events for Leo. In September, the Pluto in the 6th house and the 8th house eclipse. 8th house eclipse, this is the house of psychological breakthroughs. Maybe if there was some trauma in your life, there can be some psychological release now. But this involves digging deep. This involves some deep realizations about what it is that uh, has more power over you. Obsessions, compulsions, anything that it's like your inner demons, your internal battle that can escalate now, but also allows you to deal with that, this eclipse, allows you to release it. It's a full moon re eclipse, to release something, to be free of it in Pisces. Also, there can be some sudden activations of topics connected to insurance, inheritances, and the themes of death and birth, pregnancy or death as well. These are the big themes of the eighth house. If you're in such an age, there might be just news of something, big transformations, changes. Eighth house is also the house of mutual finances, your partners and yours finances, or money that comes to you from others, whether it's your clients or alimony or from the government. This can put some big focus there on such matters. So it might be money that you've put in stock market, for example. There is a big, and of course, eclipse might be a crisis, or it might be, it's with the North Node, hopefully to be more like a gain there, maybe gaining an inheritance or gains from a taxes or from stock investments and so on. But it is an eclipse. It's never easy to predict an eclipse, which way it's going to go. So, But the themes of this eight house themes, uh, resources, you know, stock market and so on. Uh, and there can be some powerful release of emotions. This is the eighth house of trauma, uh, feeling the emotions that are stuck in the astral body, almost like release of those uh, traumas. This eclipse can trigger release of traumas, long, long held traumas that, and you're going to be doing not just once, because there will be a few more eclipses in Pisces over the next two, three, and over the next one and a half, two years, basically. So it's first of its case where you can release stored feelings and emotions. Um, and that can go hand in hand because sixth house where Pluto is, is an eighth house of the house of Pluto. Pluto is in the sixth house of health and there is eclipse in the eighth house. So kind of eighth house is the house of death and life, both. So you can have like a spontaneous healing of some sort of health as well with Pluto in the sixth house for the last time and the eclipse in the eighth house or realizations that lead to that. Okay, now if you're Virgo sun moon arising, Pluto is entering for the last time in your life for two and a half months your fifth house. And there till November, till the, till the 20th, let's say, of November. And uh, this means that if you have some unresolved love trauma, because fifth house is love life, you know, from the past, you might revisit it and finally be healed from that. If you have some situations where you've been having, you've been working very hard towards fifth house goals, it might be towards conceiving, it might be towards finding love, 
but you've been struggling with it for years. So it might be about some creative project or wanting to have your own personal business, which is again, fifth house, your own original ideas that you give birth to. If you've been struggling with such stuff or maybe having power struggles with your children or loved ones, which is fifth house, the lovers, uh, or some creative issues, uh, then Pluto now on the critical degrees for the last time in your life will solve them. This will be the last time and actually can give, because I told you that Pluto in Capricorn has been there for many years. So, but Capricorn is a very slow sign. So it might have been repeat, Saturn is a sign of repeat, repeat, repeat. So you might have had some repeat over and over those themes of the fifth house that I mentioned. And now it might be resolved. And now it, finally, you might get the results of your efforts and reach to this higher level of that fifth house rather than the struggle part of it while Pluto was in earlier parts of your fifth house. Uh, so for some of you, it might be the culmination of finding great love or having a child or resolving a problem with a child of some sort or creative or personal business problem that it escalates or gives you a chance to create this personal business. And then after that, you'll be freed from those issues. And uh, the fifth house can be also speculative investments, Virgos. So yeah, if you've been smart with your speculative investments, you might now reap the rewards of that. Or if you haven't been smart, Pluto can destroy them. <laughs> so I don't know where it goes, but this can be one of the themes. And then the other big event for Virgos is the eclipse in the seventh house. If you're Virgo, especially around 20 to 30 degrees, sun, moon arising, this eclipse will really, you will feel it. It can be life-changing. Uh, if it's your sun in Virgo, the eclipse from your seventh house can make a big shift in your career. Maybe seeing the results of some career project and getting recognition of some sort or maybe shifting to a new direction in career or with your you have to always be careful about your health Virgos when their eclipses opposite you so yeah that's and the eclipses with Saturn and Neptune so <laughs> this is something to be cautious about and not to take big risks with your health but otherwise the seventh house if it's your ascendant in Virgo it can very much be a big shift in your relationships, big change they are taking a relationship to the next stage. If you're in an unhappy relationship, finally being free from it, completing it, completing some business partnership, releasing the results of it, or some mutual project with another, or completing some contract or agreement, or maybe uh, because the eclipses with the North Node, you can receive something from another. A person in your life that brings something to you that really changes your direction in life. If you're in the right relationship, it can mean that there's something big happening in the life of your partner, big change there that you can see. Or a partner that appears, a partnership that really changes your life. Or uh, if you're not in the right relationship, personal, contractual, business, whichever, it can be the end of it. It's an eclipse. <laughs> it's not small events. It's Faith and big events that happen. Um, but there is also this energy of moksha, because Pisces is a moksha sign of liberation, being free um, of some kind of a burden as well. But also there is this energy of being rewarded for hard efforts. Saturn is the south north node, uh, and it's a full moon as well. And especially through a relationship, through another, through a mutual project or business project, because seventh house has anything to do with business, it's your clients and so on. Now, if you're Libra and Moon Arising, Venus this month is in your sign, Libra. So it's protecting you no matter what else is happening, eclipses and whatnot. But Venus is there gracing you with its charm, bringing more love, more gentleness, protection to you, more likability and attracting the right people as well. But the first major event in September is that Pluto, will go back to your fourth house for the last time in your life. It's been there since 2008, maybe a huge change has happened in your eighth house, up and downs and family, like my husband being a liberalizing, you know, created, first created family, big changes moving in different areas of your life. And it's there for the last time. So maybe this 
big transformations in personal life, changes in relocations of places of living or in, with your family, they're finally going to come to an end. Or if you've been putting hard efforts or struggling with something connected to real estate, to parents, to the relationship with your parents, in your role as a parent yourself or with lands, with property, with real estate, if you've been struggling for a long time for such matters, or even psychological struggles from your childhood, from your early childhood and parenthood, you know, for uh, how you were raised, for family patterns, these are going to end now. This is the last time they're coming, Pluto is coming there to resolve them. It will stay at the very last 29 degrees of your fourth house. So there is this healing there. There is this seeing a result. So maybe if you've been working hard to find real estate, maybe you finally are aware to leave, you get clarity. Or if you've been having problem with some real estate or with the watering or the foundations in your house, those issues go away. Or if you've been moving a lot or not settling or having crisis in your home and your family or just very intense developments there with parents, with whatever, this is the last time this escalates and it gets resolved. You might even by the end of this period, by November, December, be clear about where you want to live or something to do with your real estate or something to do with your family as well. And it's, it's going to be, it's like healing of childhood traumas that's happening there with Pluto for the last time there. They're possibly revisiting the past in some way or revisiting your roots or going back to where you're from. Um, or it can mean as well for houses, property, real estate, doing some renovations because Pluto wants to destroy and rebuild again and that you finally do it now. But you have like about two, three months period for this. Um, of course, some crisis can come back to personal life and family. But again, this is Pluto for the last time there. So it's going to be solved and you'll be freed from that. Uh, then Libra, there is also the eclipse that's happening in your sixth house. On the 18th of September, it's eclipses with Saturn and Neptune. So you have to be cautious about your health there. But as I said, because Venus is in your sign, which is your physical body, there is protection there, but there can be a big breakthrough, a change of mind, of consciousness in regards to how you take care of your health. There might be some health scare, and because of that, you change your diet, or you change how you eat or supplements. or Because the sixth house is how you take care of your health, your health habits. So there might be some big shift there because Saturn is about part of the eclipse. You might be much more committed as well. And it, it's just the first of a few eclipses in your sixth house. So this will be a topic that you're taking very seriously for the next year or two ahead. But yeah, this is the first time you can make a very big change there. Also, there can be a big change with your daily routines, uh, maybe changing your routines, changing your work as well. There can be a big shift with someone's work or employment. So if you are a boss owner with your employees, big changing there, shifting that you have to do in some way with your how you do your work, how you, uh, your daily practices, there might be surprises there with this eclipse, definitely that you have to change something. Uh, all right. So that's for Libra, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising. For the last time in your life, Koto is entering your third house. So you might complete some project connected to media, to marketing, to writing, to, or you might revisit for the last time someone from the past to reconnect with, with siblings or to solve some issue you've had for a long time with siblings or with neighbors or with workmates, teammates and mates of any sort. Um, but also people from the past can come back to you. But also you've been having long-standing issues connected to this third house area. Now they get solved. Now they get they come up for the last time first and then they get solved by the end of November, something like that. So if there's anything to do with transportations, with communications, with being heard, with finding your voice, uh, with working in a team, if there's been any issue. So if you've been working on some project, commercial business enterprise, which is third house, is very business oriented, you might be completing it, putting final touches to it. And now you'll see the results of it as well. But of course, there might be some 
as I said, power struggle with those third house people, relative siblings, or some important crisis or development in your life connected to other people in your life, like relatives and so on, uh, that escalates and any kind of power struggles, anything to do with education, to learning skills, knowledge, after that, it's kind of like it gives it its positive results and its culmination. So you revisit this for the last time in your life and then you're free from such matters. Uh, then there is the Eclipse Scorpio, which is happening in your fifth house. On the 18th of September, this eclipse will be active for about two, three months after that. This can be powerful activation for your love life, for example meeting a romantic partner that is fated or ending a romantic partnership because it is a full moon eclipse. Sometimes it can be about endings with someone that is not uh, positive anymore in your life. But something big is happening there. Also, if you have children, there can be a big shift in their life. Like child, your child starting a new chapter, your relationship with your child is changing in some way. Um, or also... Uh, it can be, for some of you, it can be even big news like getting pregnant, for example. Um, or fifth house is also your creative project. So if you have your own business, this would be your fifth house because this is your own personal ideas and your own personal creative intelligence that you use there. So there can be a culmination of some sort there with the eclipse, bringing it to the surface over the next two, three months, some creative project that you've been working on, some personal business matter, or completing it and, you know, seeing the results of it in some way as well. Um, what else is the fifth house? It's entertainment. It's becoming famous. Some of you, if you're someone trying to become famous or in the inter entertainment industry uh, or in careers that are center stage where you're in the spotlight in some way, this is the fifth house, you might have very powerful activation in that area of your life for the next two, three months because of an eclipse there and some big redirection of your career, next direction, some big change there. If, if it's a career connected to fifth house, either entertainment, uh, either politics as well, if you're in that, or speculative investments. But because Saturn is there, I advise you not to take big risks and chances with speculative investments. <laughs> it's not about um, it's more about being conservative there. Otherwise, there might be some crisis situation. All right, if you're Sagittarius sun moon arising, Pluto is entering for the last time in your second house. And this is your finances. Pluto has been going through your house of finances since 2008, 2009. So if you've been having a lot of ups and downs financially or reversal changes, possibly some very positive developments as well. Now, if you've been putting a lot of hard work and anything to do with your security finances, might be the time for your reward. Pluto comes there for the last time to give you a reward, to see the results, so you can see the results of your personal efforts in regards to finances. And if you've been having problems and difficulties there with security, financial security, and so on, this can be the end of it. This can be the final resolution of such situations. Yeah, you might even get rich over the next two, three months if you have done the right work with Pluto over the last 16 years, you know, 15, 14 years in your, seven, in your second house. It can be even like a big change and of your, uh, or even something old, valuable that you have that you can gain back now or that you can uh, put life into and it can give you a financial reward but something might be an antique or something that you uh, thought was useless but you find out that it actually has value um, also your personal values can be reshaped now for the last time and changed in a powerful way um, transformed as well or if you've been struggling with anything second house like money but this is also eating eating habits food what you put in your body Sagittarius this can be finding the solution of those issues for the last time for the last time finally you'll find them and then you'll be free from such 
problems. So if you've been having problems with your teeth for a long time or problems with your anything to do with that part of second house rules, the face, the teeth, uh, the throat as well, uh, what you eat as well, so on, and the finances. So the, all such problems over the next two, three months should get resolved with Pluto there for the last time. Then there is the eclipse in your fourth house, Sagittarius, especially a bit delayed. The bonus Sagittarius from 20 to 30 degrees will feel this eclipse very powerfully because it's at 25 degrees in Pisces. Well, it's the first eclipse in your fourth house. There might be a big shift for some of you over the next few months. You might move to live somewhere else. Might be a new place, new house, or new country, new town. There might be some big change in your personal life with a mother figure. The fourth house, the house of endings. There might be some endings as well, or with uh, in your in your personal life in some way. It doesn't have to be negative, you know. Or you might be doing something over the next few months connected to real estate, to property, to. Uh, vehicles as well to land because fourth house rules all of those matters where the eclipse is happening something big there like shifting changing doing renovations who knows <laughs> something of this or some big change in your family as well as i said sometimes it can be a crisis that happens on a personal level i have to warn that because it's a possibility but because this eclipse is also activating your 10th house with the sun here there can be some big shift that you're experiencing Sagittarius in your career as well and with your social status. But yeah, here, family, home, place of living and career can be a big, big change there. Plus, the eclipse activates your seventh house of relationships and Jupiter. Jupiter is the ruler of the eclipse. Square Saturn, square the eclipse. Powerful. They might actually, Jupiter is at the peak of this eclipse of this configuration there might be some big development with your partnership or with your partner that affects your personal life and even your career and social status or even might be something that you make a big choice about a relationship that affects your personal life or that something happens with a relationship that really maybe someone appears and that changes where you live or or maybe someone leaves your life as a partnership and that changes how your your personal, this fourth house here, your personal uh, circumstances in life where you live and so on. But yeah, for some Sagittarius, this eclipse and configuration has the possibility to be a big game changer in some way. If not this one, then there will be another eclipse <laughs> in March 2025 in your fourth house that brings very powerful new beginnings in your personal life. This is more about conclusions, seeing final results, maybe completing a renovation. Maybe if you've been trying to move, you relocate now, or maybe some change, something leaving your personal life in some way. Now, Capricorn Sun Moon Arising, Pluto enters your life for the last time ever, ever, ever in your life. It's gone there from 2008, and maybe there was a lot of ups and downs in your life. I saw Pluto's be destroyed, Pluto, uh, not Pluto's, but Capricorn have their life totally reconstructed over the years while Pluto was in their sign. And this is the last time Pluto is dipping into your sign for two and a half months. Maybe it will give you a reward now because you've done the hard work. And Pluto just, as we say, Pluto is our ego getting dismantled, our old life getting dismantled, and we're being rebuilt new again. And some of the issues of the past will come back again, but only so they can be fully resolved. So if you've been having more than normal crisis in your life, in the last years, more than normally stressful situations, life and death situation, big changes, instabilities, or even if you had, you know, Pluto gave empowerment to many people, empowerment, positions of renown and recognition and power and so on. But Pluto is coming there. And if you've been working hard or struggling with some issue, this can be the final moment for it. You can solve it. 
something that you might have been really for years trying to achieve. Now you can find, get the crown, get rewarded for that, with, for your personal efforts. You've been trying to change yourself, your health, but struggling with it with repeated efforts. Now it can be finally that you're achieving it. Your personal transformation, or if it's your sun in Capricorn, might be connected to your career. If it's your moon, your personal psychological and personal life, your ascendant overall, yourself, your health, you might be able to achieve this finally and be free from this Plutonian energy by November, by the end of November, you know, having to fend for your life, <laughs> having to be in a fight and flight energy all the time. Uh, but Pluto and Capricorn definitely gave you the edge. Uh, but you learn, you this is the last time it's coming there. And usually when a last time planet is at the last degree of something, it gives it rewards for the hard work, for all the tests that you went through. You can have this culmination and reward now. The other big news is that there is an eclipse in your third house together with Saturn. Saturn is close to the eclipse and Neptune. There can be some big developments there in regards to siblings, relatives, uh, neighbors, teammates, workmates. Maybe if you've been working on some project with teammates, workmates, you can see the results for it over the next couple of months. But there might be some crisis there in relationships with siblings, with relatives, uh, people in your close environment as well. There can be also something big change happening in regards to transportations or vehicles in your life um but it's an eclipse you know it's more likely to have accidents and stuff connected so be careful when driving for example especially during night saturn is involved um also be careful with technologies around the 18th of september any communication transportation devices which is the third house and of course around that time some communication so if you want to go and write something or be just because eclipses can make us lose our mind, lose our cool. So in communications, in correspondence with others, try and be more controlled, use the energy of Capricorn, uh, Pluto in your sign again, because you're naturally very controlled sign, but Pluto there makes you even more controlled to control this in when it comes to communication. But some important news can come to you with this eclipse in the third house. Some important documentations and papers uh, can be also happening that you have to deal with, let's say. Uh, it can also indicate the opening of a portal because eclipses do that in regards to learning something. But for a few moments, it might feel a bit dark because it's in your third house of the mind. So you might feel like eclipse in your mind that you're confused or you're having worries that you're worrying more third house of the monkey mind with saturn the eclipse neptune you might be making mountains out of molehills as well with neptune there uh, and so just if you're having this more feeling worried in your mind psychologically remember is the eclipse in your third house uh, if you can calm your mind down with any practices or whatever but also they can, it's a very spiritual influence of Saturn and Neptune in the third house with the eclipse. They can be communication with invisible realms. They can be connection to inspiration or some downloads as well. Um, but yeah, third houses, they can also I'll advise you if possible not to travel around the 18th, you know, transportation and anything. This is the third house. Just be a bit more cautious in that area. Um, but then again, there can be a big indications that, um, for example, you might need to change after this eclipse your vehicle, or you might need to change your laptop or something, this third house that can be happening, something with, as I said, relative siblings and so on, people in your everyday environment that you might be releasing some of those people. And because uh, eclipses can cause a crisis and you say, like, I don't want those people on my feed on Facebook or Instagram anymore. I don't want to be part of this group that we gather and crotch it or the toxic environment for me or, or like uh, I'm not going to contact my friends or relatives or neighbors for something because eclipses sometimes can do that. 
Uh, but otherwise, just more, it can be just like more important events with such people. All right. So if you are Aquarius and Moon arising, Pluto is dipping for the last time in your 12th house. Of, okay, what is 12th house? Self-sabotaging behaviors, addictions, or psychological issues that you haven't solved from the past. And maybe a lot of you have been struggling or going through a lot of those things for the last 14, 15 years while well, Pluto's been in your 12th house, but it's in Capricorn. It needs repeated efforts over and over and over. The results are not fast. They're slow, if at all. Now Pluto is coming for the last time at the very last degree in your 12th house in the sign there. So you might be freed from some finally resolve it, tackle it with willpower or Pluto, resolve some self-sabotaging behavior, some addiction, some hidden enemies. Who is our biggest hidden enemy? Usually we are ourselves, but also some secrets can come to the surface, some deep psychological realizations, some memories from past lifetimes as well. But also the last degree always rewards you when a planet is at the last degree of a sign. It, some, you get the results of your efforts. There, and you might be freed after those two and a half months from some 12th house experience in your life, especially one you've been struggling with for a long time. It might be a hidden enemy. It might be own self-sabotaging behaviors. It might be some losses. It might be some uh, phobias, some fears, some psychological weaknesses, let's say. But also it can be a portal to connect you to your inner self, to go more introspective, to... Find your inner strength and Pluto will, this is Pluto's reward for the 15, 16 years it stayed in your 12th house. You'll receive it over the next two, three months for hard efforts, overcoming your inner demons in some way. Uh, it might be a spiritual reward because if you've been doing spiritual work, it might be a breakthrough to a higher consciousness. For example, it might be a breakthrough to a connection, some mystical experience. It might be a breakthrough if you've been having troubles with sleeping, for example, with phobias, with paranoias, or 12 house rules, the subconscious plus the bed, how we sleep. Um, they might come for the last time just to be resolved. The healing crisis, as we call it, the last time Pluto is does something, healing crisis, and you're freed from that. Um, and of course, 12 house can be some hidden health issues that you are unaware of, though that you've been struggling, but they're kind of mystery ones and you're not sure Pluto comes and heals them. 12 house it also is if you've been struggling with psychic attacks, they might finally be freed from that. But with, I said demons, inner demons, visible and invisible. They're either your own or, you know, from outside. You might finally be freed from that, win that battle. Or if you've been having some battle with other hidden enemies, you know, uh, it might be the resolution of it. Or if you've been in some kind of a situation for a long time where there is limitation of your movement, limitation of your, uh, this 12th house is the house of prisons of some sort, psychological, mental limitations. You might be freed again for the last two and a half, the next two and a half months, Pluto can reward you and free you from that. Uh, also, there can be some spiritual gifts from you in this 12th house. So pay attention, powerful intuitions, and so on. Then, you know, if you've been working on some project behind the scenes that is more creative, that is more, let's say, 12th house, if, which is more inspirational of some sort, it might be that you're finally completing it now with Pluto in the 12th house. Then there is another eclipse in your second, there is an eclipse in your second house. Uh, eclipses, as we know, can do some life-changing development. And it's in your house of values, finances. It can be a big, important month with finances, where your money is in. It can be some big thing about it that is important. You're moving them, changing something there where your investments are, or maybe some big realization and shift how you make your money. And it's not going to be just on the 18th of September when the eclipse is, but it will be possibly. And there might be a big event with the whole world connected to money because we're in the Aquarian Saturn-Jupiter conjunction 20-year period. And this eclipse is happening in the second house. 
from the Aquarius Jupiter Saturn conjunction. So there might be a big event September, October in finances and money, but somehow this is directly affect connected to you as well. And this might be like uh, if you've been working hard because this is a full moon eclipse with the south, with the north node, which tends to give you something, you might gain something financially. If you've been working hard on something already existing project, you can see the results of it now. But also there can be some crisis with finances. Also, second house is how you eat, your eating habits, your values, what you consider tasty, beautiful, valuable. It can shift in a powerful way. It can be triggered by positive or not so positive events, Saturn and Neptune are there as well. But you can change your eating ways and you can become very serious in regards to that. Saturn is part of the eclipse. But it's kind of fated that you change your food and diet and preferences to what you like in a very strong way. <laughs> um, okay. And last but not least is Pisces. Pisces, from the very beginning of the month, Pluto enters for the last time your 11th house. And only for two and a half months it will stay there. And if you've been struggling for years, maybe with income, which is the 11th house, or if you've been struggling with friendships, which is also the 11th house, so yeah, these things will be resolved now. This is the last time Pluto is there, so it solves those all last problems. Or 11th house is public opinion towards you, your social circle problems can be come up for the last time and be resolved. But also... If you've been working hard with for years now with consistent efforts towards better income or gains, towards some long-term goal or dream, which is also the 11th house, towards some social recognition of some sort or some title and honors and titles, which is the 11th house, now you can receive it because the last time Pluto, the very last degree of Capricorn gives its results of your efforts. Because Pluto was in your eight, uh, 11th house for many, many years, since 2008, 9. And now you finally will get the rewards for whatever efforts you did that there. So some of you might be gains, big gains that come. For others, it might be fulfilling of some dream that they've been trying hard to do. For others, it might be some social recognition and so on. Um, and then the really big event, Pisces, is the eclipse in your sign. Especially if you're around 25 degrees sun, moon arising, life-changing. What can I say? I would give it 5 degrees, so from 20 to 30 degrees in Pisces, sun, moon arising. But all Pisces will feel this eclipse in some way because it can shift the direction of their life. It's like, the, as I say, the train, the rails of the train are changing one direction to another. The eclipse is right in your sign. You'd probably take some make through your, your own initiative some big change in your life. Of course, you have to be careful about your health around that time, but usually health and, you know, don't take big risks around the 17, 18, 19th. It's a lunar eclipse, so it lasts for about three months, but it can be like a big shift in your relationships if it's your ascendant around those degrees uh, because you are changing in some way. There might be like a powerful change there, you know, with a, the ending of relationship or starting of a new chapter in your life. Sorry. Um, if it's around your sun in those degree spices, this can be a big shift in the life of your father, for example, because last time my husband had an eclipse on his son. I was like, oh, he's going to... No, he's, within three days, his dad calls and he says he's changing his whole life, selling his businesses, whatever, because the son is also the father. But also you, it can be like a big shift that's starting to happen. It might carry on for a while because there is another eclipse in Pisces in March. Um, in regards to your career, the direction in your life, uh, your identity, who you are. If it's your moon there around those degrees, it can be your personal life or relationships as well. But there is a big change. Uh, and this is an eclipse with the south north node, so it tends to give something. When I had eclipses over my moon with the north node, both both those, those years, I got pregnant 
start the family so you can give something big in personal life or with your career if it's over the sun a big new direction and so on so there you go huge for pisces and virgo this month and um, possibly for sagittarius and gemini's as well but for everyone with pluto revisiting to give its rewards and to grant you its gift for the last time for the year for, for since 2008 to grant you with its rewards for the hard work you've done for many years with Pluto transiting through that house. So check out my uh, Christina's 2025 video and written horoscopes. They're incredible, 120 pages for each sign if you're interested. And may you be blessed in September.